So this panel isn't, of course, all about Duke Nukem. It's about, you know, me being a voice whore and all of the things that I do to earn money with my voice. Um, among them are theme park character voices. Uh, there's uh, Legoland California, which is in the San Diego area. I do a lot of the uh, voices for their attractions. And then there's a theme park in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, known as Dollywood. Y'all familiar with Dollywood? Yo, come back now, you hear? Why are they always checking your hearing down south? I want to know that. Anyway, there's a ride called the Mystery Mine Ride with an audio animatronic buzzard that you meet along the way as you get into it. And when I uh, went to audition for this particular uh, characterization, uh, what they wanted was somebody who could do a fairly genuine Tennessee accent who could sing on key and sound like a maniacal evil buzzard. And apparently I met the criteria for all three of those. And so that's another one of the things I do is, you know, theme park character voices. Uh, every once in a while I get to do something uh, in my own voice for a theme park. Uh, for instance, uh, Bush Gardens in Williamsburg, Virginia. I don't know if you're familiar with that theme park. Uh, but if you're ever there and you're getting aboard the uh, monorail to ride to the hospitality center and test some free beer, I don't know if I'm the voice there anymore, but many years ago I was the guy who went, uh, Welcome aboard, Eagle One. Please remain seated at all times while the tram is moving, and you can only enjoy two free samples of beer today. Um, so that's one of the many different things I do is, is uh, theme park stuff. There's uh, infomercials for, um, um, God, weight loss products, for fitness gear, uh, for... Um, Swing Away, which was a uh, uh, product to help you learn to swing the bat better and, and hit like Albert Pujols. Uh, I've, I've done so many different weird things. Message on hold, um, personal greeting messages for your cell phone, ringtones, and yes, I do sell those on my website. You feel free to check that out. And um, a lot of times I get uh, these video game jobs because of the vocal range that I'm able to do. So I do a lot of characterizations and I thought I'd just play you my character demo real quick. This is what I send to agents or clients when they're saying, we need a character voice, maybe you're the guy who can do it, what kind of stuff do you do? I tell them, well, I do this kind of stuff. Hello, I'm John St. John, voiceover artist, and here's some of what I can do. Smithers, who is that large-voiced individual? Ah, uh, that's John St. John, sir. Ah, uh, St. John, eh? Is he available? Ah, uh, yes, sir, I believe he is. Excellent. This is Roger Rabbit! Breathe! Give St. John a break! After all, he seems like a very sensible and sober fellow. Hi, this is your best friend, the Shadow St. Stevens of American Top 40. Greetings, boys and ghoulies! Here, with a dastardly little tale I like to call Dead Air. A muck in America. In 13 states, it's illegal. Only on MTV. Nowhere else. John St. John keeps his house in the pink with a full foot of Owens Corning pink fiberglass insulation. This is Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. Mr. LaForge, please remove that silly vice off and end game. Ah, when I was a boy, we didn't have this Star Trek giddy spacecraft. Uh, you're giving me nachos here. Hi. Inspector Gadget may return after these messages. Oh, goody. Hi, ho, Kermit the Frog here. Yellow moons, pink hearts, green clovers, frosted lucky charms. They're magically delicious, don't you know? There is no honor in defeat for the Shadow Warrior. This is Droopy. Going down, sir. Hello, this is James Mason, and I'm quite dead. Really, I'm quite sure. This is Homer St. Timpton. Oh, that rabbit has stolen the Illudium Q32 explosive space motorator. That makes me very angry. Every once in a while, I get stuck in a character voice. Last time at dinner, I think it was Patrick Stewart. All, all the way to the restaurant and back, I had to be good. Engage. Make it so, number one. Take off that silly vibes up. Uh, let's do a, a couple more uh, Q&A things here real quick. Some questions. Um, I, I want to keep these ladies busy with their microphones. They, they get bored, I think, at my panel if they're not doing something. What's your question, sir? Uh, hi, John. I was wondering if you liked Doom and all, or Quaid, or both. Stein. Yes. Yes and yes. Back in the day, that was all we really had besides Duke. I know, and it was great that Duke used the Doom engine, too. Yeah. Uh, you felt like you already knew the game when you started playing it. But everybody remember the cheat codes? DN clip? Nope. Yeah. Really? You didn't have the cheat codes? Okay, I, 
I was given them all by 3D Realms when the game came out, so... I won, I, I got all the way through Duke Nukem 3D in like two hours. DN Clip would turn off clipping mode. It didn't matter what room you were in, you could walk right through the wall and be out of it. Uh, oddly enough, God Mode was DN Crows. Crows? Crows! <laughs> um, okay, back there. On the other side, who's got the microphone? Ask away. What's your question, sir? Uh, how did you feel about Duke Nukem's Titty City? Oh, Titty City was awesome. Are you guys all familiar with Titty City? Yes. Okay, and for those of you who may not be familiar with it, um, before Duke Nukem Forever was released, uh, Gearbox Software threw a party in Las Vegas. So they flew me and a bunch of people out there to Las Vegas, and they took the Deja Vu Showgirls strip club near the airport. They spent a lot of money and turned it into Duke Nukem's Titty City just for the night. So they had a fleet of stretch Humvee limos, I think there were five or six of them, all vinyl wrapped with Duke Nukem Forever. And they picked us up at hotels and took us to Titty City where they had professional models playing the part of the strippers at the club. So, which is kind of unfortunate because they were professional models, they did not actually strip. but. It was pretty cool. I mean, they had every detail in, in this uh, club, all the way down to urinal cakes that were a bullseye and said, Duke's something or other. I mean, they didn't miss a trick. So Titty City was pretty awesome. Now, are you talking about Titty City in the game? Yeah. It's okay, the real thing was better. <laughs> Who's got a question, anybody else? Uh, oh, there'll be a couple of questions up in the front here. And uh, feel free to speak up because um, that microphone seems a bit sensitive. Um, what, it, what inspired you to do, 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 um, him, yeah. To do, oh, the Duke Nukem voice? Yeah, or like the whole thing, the well, it, it, voice like, acting and everything. Oh, the whole voice acting thing? Um, I was a radio broadcaster for 30 years and a, you know, wacky morning show guy and production director, so I was the one always doing the character voices for morning shows if I wasn't the host myself. And uh, in doing all of these character voices over the years, I, I, I developed a pretty good range and I could do a lot of dialects. I've lived all over, I've seen America on the radio plant. I lived in the Deep South, I lived in New England, I've spent time all over the country, so I learned dialects, you know, wherever I lived. And uh, just kind of naturally lent itself to that. So when a casting director for video games came to me, that's uh, why I was prepared to audition right away and do character voices for them. Did that answer your question thoroughly? Are you f fully satisfied? Yeah, because he plays it all the time, or whenever you can. You play Duke Nukem forever whenever you can? Yeah. Oh, dude, you rock. You help put my kids through college. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the next question? Uh, yeah, you did the uh, Heroes of New Earth uh, sound pack, the badass sound pack. Uh, yes. How did you get contacted for that, and how do you feel your voice getting broadcast when uh, people are kicking ass? I think it's pretty cool. I've, I've only seen demo videos on YouTube, but I, I like it a lot. I, I think my voice lended a lot to that particular game. And narrating the action going on, that's kind of a cool thing. Oh, by the way, I've got another new game that just came out. Um, Jimmy Johnson's Anything with an Engine. Have you heard of this one? He and Jimmy Fallon were playing it on uh, TV the other night. There's a clip on YouTube, and uh, I heard myself in the background while they were playing this. It's, it's, it's a funky racing game. You, it's, you can race just about anything with wheels around a track. And uh, so that's, that's a game you may want to buy to help put my youngest child through school. Thank you. It's up to you. Next question? Oh, where are we going now? Where are we going? Have you ever done any uh, GPS or sat nav in what voices? You know, I, somebody asked me if I was interested in doing that. I said yes, but I haven't heard back from the TomTom Tom company yet. Um, I have a TomTom Tom GPS Navi in my car, and I downloaded the Homer Simpson voice for mine. So, and I know Dan Castellaneta makes you know five or six bucks every time you do. You pay like thirteen bucks for it, but it's freaking funny to be driving along and go three hundred yards and then turn right. I love that. Um, I have not done a Duke Nukem for a Navi yet, and I think it's because 
that. I don't know why. Maybe they're afraid I would scare people while they were driving. <laughs> Turn right, or I'll rip out your eyeball and piss on your brain. <laughs> I don't know if that would work. But I, I'd be interested in doing it. Do you work for one of those companies? Are you with Garmin? Okay, well, if you run into them, tell them yes, I'm interested. They can call me anytime. What's the next question? Have you ever done a voice for a character that you absolutely hated? Big the Cat. <laughs> Did I hesitate more than a quarter of a second on that one? I don't think so. I know, I, I know a lot of you guys love the Sonic Adventures, and I think the game's really cool, and Big the Cat's a cute character. To me personally, that was just the stupid advice I've ever done. That's just stupid. So yeah, that's, that's the only one I really didn't like. I, the, the one voice I'm most proud of, as far as a performance goes, would be in the game Twisted Metal 4. You know what? You know, when the, I, hopefully you don't just hit the enter key and start the game immediately every time. Sometimes you sit through and listen to the introduction, right? Okay, the Sweet Tooth spokesperson at the beginning that sounds kind of like the Crypt Keeper from Tales of the Crypt, that's me. And that was my single best voice acting performance in a video game to date, I think, because it's maniacally evil. And the first time when they sent me the game and I popped it into the, uh, the PlayStation console, I didn't know it was me. I went, oh, this part's cool. And it was actually my, my oldest daughter who said, Daddy, that sounds like you. Went, oh my God, that is me. I didn't even recognize it at first. It's, it's a really good, maniacal, scary, evil, I summoned up Satan from hell itself kind of voiceover. So that's what I'm most proud of. Next question, Blues. Okay, you have to have the microphone. Ah. Uh, you said that you would do any given voice role for, if someone paid you for it, well, with the exceptions you mentioned. Yeah. If I sent you a five right now, would you do a quick ad lip scene of Duke Nukem kicking the crap out of Big the Cat? Yes! yes! Apparently I need to do it for free. So, uh, Duke Nukem killing Big the Cat, basically. Oh my god, this is good. Sorry, man, sorry! 